At this point in class, we've looked at lots of different situations where objects are either at rest, moving at a constant velocity, or speeding up and slowing down, and have identified the forces that that object feels while they're speeding up, slowing down, or moving at a constant velocity. We've also figured out how to know whether or not the forces are balanced, or if there's one force in a particular direction and no forces in another particular direction. When we look at some of the situations that we've looked at so far, uh, we can see that all the forces we've talked about so far are either horizontal forces or vertical forces. Well, there's nothing to dictate that forces only have to be horizontal or vertical. So let's look at a situation where we have a force that's not only in the x direction or only in the y direction. So take this situation where a person is hanging, let's say a, a gymnast by some rings. So let's think through, first of all, what's true of the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. Well, if they're hanging at rest, we know that if the velocity is constant or if there is no velocity, then the sum of the forces in both the x and the y direction have to be zero. Everything has to be balanced out. Well, let's make a force diagram. We know that the force of gravity pulls on all objects with mass, so we're going to have a force of gravity that the, gym, the person feels. And these ropes are being stretched, and so they're going to like pull back against the gymnast. This rope will pull kind of like up and to the right, and the rope on the left is going to pull up and to the left. So we'll call that force of tension 1 and force of tension 2. Now, because they're at rest, we know that all of the forces have to be balanced or equal out, both in the x direction and the y direction. Well, how can we have three forces balance one another? Well, if we have forces that are at an angle, they're either not in the x direction or the y direction only, um, we're going to think about that one force doing two separate things. We're going to think about the fact that this force of tension 1, it's kind of pulling to the right and pulling up, and the force of tension 2 is pulling to the left and up, kind of at the same time. So we're going to break apart let's say, the force of tension 1 into its pieces. Well, how much of the force of tension 1 is pulling right, and how much of that is pulling up? So we're going to use the actual force of tension, and we're going to make that into a right triangle where the tension, the real force, is the hypotenuse. If we draw two sides of this right triangle, so one is in the x direction, one is in the y direction, we're going to say that the one in the x direction that's what we're going to call the x component of tension. How much of that tension is just pulling to the right? And the vertical part of this triangle, the part in the y direction, we're going to call that the y component of tension. That's how much of tension 1 is pulling up. And so this will represent, ft1x will represent the amount of tension 1 pulling in just the x direction. And ft1y will represent how much of that tension 1 is just pulling up or in the y direction. Similarly, uh, the force of tension 2 is pulling in kind of two different directions and if we kind of show it down here we can see that we have a solid line representing the actual force of tension and then we have dashed lines showing the components of that tension. In this case how much of it is pulling to the left, that's FT2X, and how much of tension 2 is pulling up, that's FT2Y. Now, the reason that we do this is it's going to help us figure out like what balances what in our force diagram because remember the sum of the forces in our x direction has to be zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be zero. So this is our force diagram. These are the real forces that the person experiences in the actual directions. But to help us see what's balanced, we're going to make something called a component force diagram. So we're going to kind of sketch out our x and our y directions and we're going to only add forces that are in the x and y direction only and components of forces that are uh, in the x and y direction. So the force of gravity is straight down. It's already in the y direction, so we're going to add that here. And then we're not going to add the actual force of tension 1. We're just going to add the components of tension 1. So we've got the how much of tension 1 is pulling in the x direction or to the right and how much of it is pulling in the y direction, or the vertical component of that tension. And then if we add the components of tension 2 to our component force diagram, we get this. We've got the 
component of tension to in the x direction and the component of tension to in the y direction. Uh, now we can think through well, what are the forces <clears throat> in the x direction or components of forces in the x direction only that must be balanced. Well, we can see that there's only two things in the x direction. There's the x component of tension 2 and the x component of tension 1. They're both in opposite directions and so they have to be the same size because when we add up anything in the x direction only, the sum of the force in the x direction, that has to be zero. Uh, and then we can write something that we're going to call the net force equation. So we, we know the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be zero, but what are we adding up in that x direction? So we can write out just the pieces of the force that are in the x direction only, being the x component of tension 2 and the x component of tension 1. Remember that the arrows over a variable remind us that whatever we plug in for this has a size and direction. So these forces or these components can be positive or negative. When we look back at our component force diagram, force of tension 2 in the x is the negative direction. Uh, the x component of tension 1 is in the positive direction, so we'd be adding a negative and positive component. We know they have to be the same size because the sum of those two things has to be zero. And then what about the y direction? We know that the sum of all the forces in the y direction must be zero. Well, what balances what? Well, we can see that the force of gravity is pulling in the negative y direction. And then we have two y components of tension pulling up. And so we can see that the force of gravity must be balanced by both y components, ft1y and ft2y. And so if we were to write out our net force equation, we'd say that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the sum of well, everything in the y direction, the whole force of gravity, the y component of tension 2, and the y component of tension 1. And the sum of all of those things, the one negative thing and the two positive things, will be equal to zero.